Changing hemispheres following the snake trail, we are now in China on the Boai Sea coast, about a thousand kilometers east of Beijing. Shedao is a tiny island. In Chinese, the name means small dragon mountain. At first sight, it is just a dry rock, about 30 hectares in surface. However, this island is an exceptional place. To protect it from snake smugglers and reptilotherapists, the Chinese authorities have declared Chidao a national park, the only one in the world dedicated to snakes. It is situated on an avian flight path connecting Siberia to the warm lands of southern Asia. Twice a year in autumn and spring, millions of migrating birds interrupt their journey to rest on the island. Time and geography played a bad trick on the snakes of Shedao. Before the last ice age, they used to hunt rodents. At that time, the island was part of continental Asia. All creatures, prey and predators, were free to come and go, until the day the glaciers started to melt and the water level rose. Every animal that could fly or run fled to the continent, but all the others were trapped on the small islands. This was the case for the Shedao snakes, the Gloideus, a sort of rattlesnake without a rattle, which flourished in this region. With such an enormous ecological change, they had to adapt or die. Many must have starved to death, but some managed to survive by changing their hunting technique radically. Today, there are 20,000 descendants of these Gloideus, the 20,000 Shedoensis, which live on this 30 hectare island. The island is literally carpeted with snakes. A glorious success story for evolution and a magnet for Xavier and Francois, an apprentice herpetologist. They savor the welcoming spider webs in the Shedao thickets. There's one snake for every square meter. When you walk around, this is what happens. When it tries to get away, hang on to the tail, but watch out for the head. Do I put my foot on its head? No, you can catch it without doing that. It will try to get away in that direction. Watch out for its head. If the head turns towards you, let it go. Watch out, it's turning. It's beating its tail. Yes, it's going to flee. It's swishing its tail to tell you it's going to bite you. Let it go. Watch out for its head. Watch out. Let it go. It's stuck under a stone. Avoid it. You can catch it when it stretches out. It's too short, but it will uncoil. Never put your hand in that position. Look, it's stuck under its rock. Only put your hand in if you're wearing gloves. With gloves, there are no problems, but without gloves, you see you've got to let it go. There it is, catch it. Watch out though. It's coming back fast, it's coming back fast. It's easy to do, but you have to keep your eyes on the head all the time. It's coming out to rest. Step on it, but not too hard. It's got no strength left. Then block the head with a stick. Then come in from behind. I press it hard there. No, no, not too hard. It's soft. Feel the jaws. There, with that finger I can feel a jaw, and in the other as well, the joint. Can you press strongly? No, not strongly. They're all soft. Well, let's get it into a clearing so you can release it. 
Francois is highly aware that these snakes are extremely venomous. Xavier is only just recovering from a bite from a tiger snake, and Mr. Soon, his Chinese colleague, was bitten by a gloideus just a few hours after they arrived. Check that the head's safely under your foot, because if you pull the snake and the head's released, he could bite back at you very quickly. You check that the head's held firmly. Do you think you've got it held firm? Yes, the body. Now you can catch the tail without a problem. Hold the pointed end. And never lose sight of the snake, OK? It's very strong, isn't it? Yes, and after that, you can lift it, but if it turns its head to bite you, drop it. It'll get tired very quickly. If you hold it like that, it can coil upwards. But after a time it gets tired? Yes, it gets tired quickly. Completely? Yes, and then it gives up. That's what it's doing now. OK, so it's only really dangerous at the beginning. Well, this is a big one. I don't think I want to handle it straight away. I'd rather wait. Look at him jump. The evolutionary secret of the gloideus snakes is simple. Frugal habits and opportunity. For 10 months a year, there's nothing to eat, so they sleep. For two months, in spring and autumn, they hunt and eat as much as possible. Now we are in October, and the gloideus are gradually waking up from a five-month siesta, scale by scale. The thousands of snakes set out together to climb the bushes on the island. Each chooses a branch. For some, waking up is more difficult than for others. That one's pretty. When they're small, they're less dangerous. Look, he's going to stretch out. That's less frightening. Why not try to handle it? It's quite easy. Oh, I'm crushing its head. Move your fingers a little so you can feel the jaw. Pull the body up a little further between your fingers. OK, I see. Up. The body's lifting and coiling upwards. There we are, I'm holding my first snake. It is small after the big ones. Use all your fingers. All my fingers. To hold it. All your fingers. Like that? Because it could wriggle free. That's not true for all species of snakes. There are some snakes you cannot catch by hand. In some snakes, the fangs are longer than the head. So that makes it impossible. In fact, many herpetologists have been bitten like that. They did not realize the snakes had such long fangs that they could be bitten, although the technique works well on other snakes. Look out, this is the dangerous phase. You see, it's not very complicated. Ah, but don't get overconfident. The danger is that by the time you've caught ten, it seems easy. You never get bitten by the first snake you pick up. You slip into bad habits. Once they have climbed onto the branches, these Gloideus shadowensis are no longer scared of man. All of the other snakes in this film have to be approached with the utmost of caution. The Gloideus are totally laid back. This indifference helps Xavier observe previously unknown behavior patterns, in particular, the way these snakes hunt, which is usually impossible to observe in nature. Here it is easy. He's eaten a small bird. This species only lives on Shadao. Millions of years ago, when the sea level rose, the snakes became imprisoned on the island. They adapted to local conditions. In fact, they were able to survive and even flourish because the island became a rest stop for migrating birds. These snakes used to hunt on land. Now they're more frequently seen on branches than on the ground. Oh, he's going inside. Is there a hole? Yes. Let's try this one then. Didn't he move fast? They really know their territory well. Francois and Xavier try to get the snakes to attack by dangling different kinds of food on the end of a fishing rod. The objective of this study is to describe the hunting process phase by phase. 
Is it smell, movement or size which provokes the attack? For the moment, no one knows. This one's digesting something. He's not happy. So it's time for a sandwich. There are so many birds. They encircle the chicks. The birds have to stop here despite the snakes because there's food and water. I'm sure they think the risk is worth it. Shedao is unique because it's the only place in which so many snakes lie in ambush. To catch the birds, the snakes hang out like they're a spider's web. The key word for the way the island operates is migration. Hundreds of thousands of birds fly over the island every year. Birds of prey travel the migration route without a break. They glide, inaccessible, built for long-range flight. But the small sparrows have to take a break, and Shedao is the first landing spot after a long journey over the waves. Some stop to peck some seeds or simply to rest. Others only come to drink. Many never leave. Like on Karnak Island, migrating birds are the only possible source of food for the snakes. Totally sedentary, glodious snakes stranded on Shadow cannot leave their island or migrate with their prey. When the birds fly in, they eat their fill for three or four weeks. The rest of the year they sleep under stones, safe from the frost and the predators. Mammals have to eat every day or they die very quickly. The gloideus eat twice a year and flourish. This is how they evolved on Shadow. There you go. With luck, each snake on Shedao can catch a dozen birds each hunting season. That's quite enough for its energy needs. The snakes can then go without food for six months to a year without reducing their chances of survival. There are 20,000 snakes on the island, which means that they eat at least 200,000 birds every spring and every autumn. The Shedao Park Wardens have installed small concrete tanks on the island to catch rainwater. These attract thirsty birds. The birds are prized by the snakes. Bunched up like an accordion or coiled like a spring, a snake cannot attack anything further away than about 30 centimeters from its mouth. So it's not that easy to catch a fast-moving bird. But although an individual snake is handicapped, the group wins out by putting a hunter each branch below each bird perch. Each snake eats in turn, and sometimes there are up to 50 snakes waiting for food around the water tank. The water tanks are like magnets, they pull the migrating birds down from the sky into the gloideous throats.
The birds only spend a few seconds in the same place, so the hunter has little time to react. As soon as the prey enters the killing zone, it strikes. The strong venom is easy to produce, so the snake can use it freely. If it catches the bird immediately, so much the better. If the bird is bitten but manages to fly off, it cannot go far before it crashes into the brush a few seconds later. The snake would probably have been happier with a lighter prey. During the hunting season, a lot of prey is lost as birds fall undetected into the brush or are too big to be swallowed. But the snakes are thorough, and very little goes to waste. Like Russian dolls, the further down a bush, the bigger the snake. If a prey is too big, the first snake drops it to snakes lower down. This solidarity ensures the survival of the marooned snakes of Shadao. <laughs>